Well, it's the end of the school year who's excited. Oh, man. Summer, here we come. It's going to be a different summer than it was last year. Now, imagine that you've made it this far. It's the very end of the school year, and you're so excited like you are, um, but you you find out that you're failing algebra, and you're not actually going to be moving on to the next grade. Like, you're going to be getting held back. Wouldn't that be a bummer, right? But here's the thing. That's all the case in this hypothetical scenario, but there's this moment where your teacher leaves the, the grading spreadsheet tab open on the computer. And for homeschoolers, that your mom or whatever, right? And, um, and then le- she leaves the room for like an hour just with you in there because she trusts you. You are a remarkable person <laughs> who has never done anything wrong. And so you are trusted at that level to be failing a class and to have that spreadsheet open. And you know in your mind, all you got to do is go back like three, five, ten weeks, change one grade, because you're only making like a 68 in the class. If you change the one test score, like three points, you'd be passing the class and no one would ever even know. Would you do it? I just wonder, would you do it? People in here be like, yeah, I'd do it. (laughs) Some of y'all be like, no, I wouldn't do it. That's wrong. Okay, good. You're the Christians in the room. What if I could guarantee you this though, Christian, that no one would find out. I could guarantee, like I will promise you that no one will find out. No one will ever know. And you'll pass the class and you'll move on and everything would just be fine. Would you do it then? Don't answer out loud. Answer your mind. (laughs) Everyone's like, yes, I'd do it. Sign me up. All right, for the, for the few people in the room who still have a conscience and a sense of morality who wouldn't do it, what if all of that is still true, but your best friend, dear, sweet Dorothy, <laughs> Dorothy is, is, is in your ear, nudging you in the desk next to you, just egging you on, being like, bro, no one's going to find out. Like, what's the big deal? It's just one test score. And honestly, like, you should have passed that test anyway, but you couldn't because everybody had COVID and, like, you missed a, a ton of class and, like, you broke your face back then. And, you know, like, you're really smart and you deserve to pass. Plus, next year, you don't want to be in, like, held back with all these lame Freshman, that's, that'd be the worst. So just kind of like change the grade. Like no one's going to find out. It's going to be fine, right? I wonder if we would do it then because we'd be giving in to peer pressure sometimes, right? Uh, it's this moment. And maybe you've been in a moment like this before where you're tempted to do something that isn't right and you are pretty sure you're not going to get caught and no one is ever going to find out and everyone around you is being like, go for it. What's the big deal? It might be fun. It might even feel good. You might even justify it and be like, this is actually going to like benefit me in the long run. This could even benefit other people. Like I'm helping, you know? I'm not going to get, there's no, there's no repercussions for this. We might even say, I, I, I don't just want this. I, I deserve this. I've, I deserve to have a little fun. I deserve to try this at least just once, just to know what it's like. How else am I going to relate The problem is we have like that thing on our shoulders where it's like the devil on one side and like, you know, God on the other side, like in the emperor's new groove. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, On one hand, (laughs) on one hand, all the homeschoolers know what I'm talking about. Uh, Anyway, on one hand, um, you know God is going to be hurt and upset like if you fail and you give in to the temptation and into the sin because we read in scripture like God hates sin. So you're like, shoot, I'm going to disappoint God. Like even if I don't get caught or like no one ever finds out, like God knows. But eh. And on the other hand, and you know his grace is sufficient. You know Jesus died on the cross and his forgiveness abounds. And you think in your brain, like, if I don't sin a little bit, Jesus died for nothing. So, I mean, I, you know, I mean, I got to make it worth it. So I'm going to be forgiven anyway. So you give in, right? And we all probably know what this feels like too to give in and do something that you know you shouldn't, that was wrong, that's harmful to yourself or other people or maybe even your future in some way. We know what that feels like. Um, So now what? What do we do? 
We've been in this passage in Matthew chapter 4, so if you've got your Bibles, go ahead and turn there now. Jesus was being tempted by the devil, and he, like I said, he'd been fasting for 40 days. He'd gone 40 days without any food, so the boy was hungry. The devil was like, have some bread. He was like, no! And uh, he, he passed that test. They were like, you know, change. The devil was like, change a couple of numbers on the spreadsheet. And Jesus was like, no! Back down, Dorothy. Dorothy the devil. <laughs> And then, uh, so Satan comes back with this one in verse 5 of Matthew 4. The devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. And he said, if you are really the son of God, (laughs) if you really are a Christian, throw yourself down. My Bible says, yeet yourself. Yeah, it's a good translation. It's the RHV, the Ren Harpo version. For it is written... And he quotes scripture. He, being God, will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift up their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. If you jumped off of this, you wouldn't even get hurt. Like God says it in his word. Like he's going to take care of you and he's going to protect you. But Jesus answered him, look, it's also written, don't put the Lord your God to the test. I want to ask you this. Other than the devil, who was out there with Jesus? No one. No one was with him. He was in the secret, in the quiet place. If Jesus had eaten the bread that he was tempted with first, who would have known about that? God? Yeah. But otherwise, no one, right? If Jesus would have jumped, and even if God protected him, like we don't know what would have happened if he did jump. But even if he did, who would have known about that? Other than God? No one. Jesus is always the right answer when you're in church. He would have known we are talking about Jesus. He could have done all of this. He could have given into temptation. He could have done the thing that he knew he shouldn't have done. And he could have said, like, I'm never going to get caught. It might even be kind of awesome. Like, I'm going to get all these benefits from it. Like, this could be pretty cool. I've actually been struggling and suffering for the past 40 days. Maybe I deserve this bread. Maybe I earn this bread, right? And then uh, maybe I need this fame. I need this popularity. I need this recognition, No one's ever going to find out. No one's ever going to know. I'm just going to switch the grade. He could have done that. And then he could have walked out of the wilderness and his disciples could have looked at Jesus and been like, Jesus, how was your time in the desert? How was your time in the wilderness? How was it being tempted? Did you overcome? Jesus could have been like, Yeah, bro, I overcame. It was dope. Devil tried to come at me with this and that. I was like, not today, Satan. And everything was fantastic. Because his word against theirs, like, they not going to know. They weren't there. It was just Jesus to tell the story about it. But he didn't do that, did he? No. It's pretty awesome. Jesus, hear this, did what was right even when no one was watching. This is like the definition of integrity. Do you do what is right even when you know no one is watching, even when you know you won't get caught, even when there doesn't seem like there will be any consequences? I say it doesn't seem like there will be any consequences. You know, most psychologists agree that even good people are more likely to do bad things when no one is watching. Maybe you've lived this out. You know what I'm talking about. Like there are things you would do in the darkness, in the silence, uh, when no one else is around that you wouldn't do in broad daylight, like in the middle of the mall or something like that. Uh, The psychologists also agree that even perceived observation can make us better people. There's this article from Scientific American published in 2011. I wanted to read uh, this to you. I thought it was interesting. It says, a group of scientists at Newcastle University headed by Melissa Bateson and Daniel Nettle of the Center for Behavior and Evolution conducted a field experiment demonstrating that merely hanging up posters of staring eyes is enough to significantly change people's behavior. I'm about to start doing that around this room. Just put up posters of eyes. That'd be creepy. (laughs) But it says, over the course of 32 days, the scientists spent many hours recording customers' littering behavior in their university's main cafeteria, counting the number of people that cleaned up after themselves after they had finished their meals, right? So in their study, the researchers determined the effect of the eyes on individual behavior by controlling 
uh, several conditions. For example, they, they put up posters with corresponding verbal text, like don't litter, throw away your trash, stuff like that. They put up posters without any text, just pictures of random things. They put up male versus female faces. They put up posters of unrelated stuff, like flowers and things like that. Yeah, flowers are cool. The posters were hung at eye level, and every day the location of the poster was randomly determined. Well, the researchers found that during periods when the posters of the eyes, instead of flowers, overlooked the diners, twice as many people cleaned up after themselves just because they thought they were being watched by posters of eyes. It's crazy. I think the problem is, for us as Christians, we, we can tend to be more worried about earthly consequences than eternal impact. There is an, etern- there is an impact. There is a bigger picture. There's, a, there's bigger things going on than just what, what uh, meets the eye, than just what's at the surface of every temptation and every sin, of every decision that we make. It's not just that decision. There's so much more than that. There's an, there's an impact. But all we're sitting here worried about is are we going to get caught? Are we going to get away with it? Am I going to get in trouble or not? Right? Thomas Jefferson once said, whenever you do a thing, act as if the world were watching. That's kind of a scary thought, especially for people with like social anxiety or the fear of public speaking or being in public at all. But I want to challenge this uh, a step further, actually, because we know that whether the world is watching or not, God always is. God is always watching because he's everywhere. He's in everything and through everything. Remember when Jesus said, don't put the Lord your God to the test, right? Whenever he was being tempted and Satan was like, hey, let's see if God is really legit. Let's see if he really can help you. Let's see if he really can save you. Jesus is like, no, don't put him to the test. The apostle Paul in the book of Galatians takes that a step further. And I really like this because the apostle Paul had an encounter with the resurrected Jesus that changed his life. And he says, don't be deceived. God cannot be mocked. He's like, don't kid yourself. You think you're pulling a fast one on God. You think, you think God works for you. You're out of your mind. You can't mock God. Like, like, don't sit here and try to figure out God. Like, you got him figured out. Like, if I do this, it's going to be all right because he's going to forgive me. There's bigger things at play than you could ever, ever, ever come close to even possibly imagining. Don't kid yourself. This is why I think we've got to shift our mindset away from this, can I get away with it mentality. This, will I get in trouble or will I get caught or not mentality? We were made for so much more. We've got to shift out of that and shift into how can I honor God with this? And you can honor God even through your mistakes by owning it, by coming clean, by confessing, by making it right and not just trying to brush it under the rug. And pretend like it didn't happen and just move on in secrecy. Nothing good happens in secrecy. God even says it's not good for us to be alone. Nothing good happens in the dark. That's why Jesus is the light. So, how can we honor God? Do not be deceived. You can test people. You can deceive people. You can even mock people, but nothing gets past him. So Paul goes on with this um, in the second half of that verse. A man reaps what he sows. It's kind of this agriculture or like this farming metaphor, meaning that basically what you put into the ground determines what comes out of it. You understand? You'll get out of the ground what you put into it. If you're planting beans, you're not going to get a dragon fruit. Dragon fruits are sick. I mean, they look awesome. They taste delicious. They're super cool. Everybody wants a dragon fruit. They're like, man, that is dope. Nobody looks at a bean and is like, mm, yay, beans. They're the worst. They just give you gas. Like, beans are, are just dumb. I don't even know what, what they are, but like, <laughs> dragon fruits are delicious. I'm glad. <laughs> but, <laughs> hey, they're the magical fruit, so I feel you. When you put beans into the ground of your life, You're not getting dragon fruit out. 
So when we sin, when we mess up, when we give in to temptation, because it's going to happen. Like, you're not Jesus. You're a sinner, and so am I. Like, you'll make mistakes, and so will I. We have before. We will again. So when it happens, God willing, they're fewer and farther between. I want you to hear this tonight. God doesn't love you any less. He can't. He can't love you any less. He also can't love you any more. He already loves you as much as anyone or anything can possibly be loved by the creator and the sustainer of the entire universe. His grace and his mercy and his kindness and his compassion and his forgiveness, they all still apply to you just as much after you sin, you give in to temptation and you mess up as they did before. Those things don't go away. Nothing can take that away. Nothing can take God's love away from you, no matter what you do, no matter what you even think or say, no matter what you've seen. But, but God wants more for your life. He wants more for you than just getting by. He wants more for you than just not getting caught or not getting in trouble and doing just enough to not wreck your life. He wants you to have a full life, a life of abundance and joy. He wants you to grow healthy, spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, to bear good fruit. So we've got to be putting these things in the ground that, that we're growing in. We've got to cultivate them. We've got to surround ourselves with good things, with good people. But there are shortcuts in life. And I think temptations are often shortcuts, perceived shortcuts to feeling differently, to having more success or popularity or just escaping your problems. It's like a Band-Aid. It's not an actual solution. It's a temptation to get satisfaction that you really want, you really need some other way other than God, other than Jesus, the only one who can really give it to you. But they're lies. They're deceptions. They, were, they will hurt your health. They will hurt your growth. I want you to hear this as we finish up. What you do now affects who you are later. What you do now affects who you are later. So are you making decisions today that will lead you to the life that you want in the future? Think about it. What are some of the things that you have done recently? What are some of the things that you're hiding that no one else knows about maybe right now? Are those things a part of the building blocks of the life that you want, that God has called you to, the one that he's built you for? Or are they toxic? Is it just creating toxic ground for you to grow in? And listen, it's never too late. No matter what, it's never too late. You're never too far gone. If you've made horrible decisions and you've done things that you regret, it's never too late to turn it around. Jesus loves you so much. Jesus loves you so much, he stepped out of perfection and out of heaven. He stepped into this mess and he was tempted just like me and you. He felt all the things that we have felt and then some. You know why? Because he went to the cross. You know what the, the payment for sin is of which we're all guilty? Death. The moment you sinned the first time, you should have dropped dead. But you know why you didn't? It was because someone dropped dead for you and he paid that price for you so that you don't have to, so that you can live, so that you can make the choice to honor him with your life. Is that what you're choosing? Is that what you're doing with your life? Or are you choosing the exact opposite? There doesn't have to be shame associated with that. I want you to receive the forgiveness and the grace and the freedom that comes from what Jesus did for you because he gave that to you. Accept it, accept it and live in it. Live for him. I hope that you will. 